Now I request Professor D B Patil, ma'am, to welcome the resource person. Over to you, ma'am. Hello, D B Patil. Yes. Uh, I would like to start my welcome speech with, with one quote that you need a village if only for the pleasure of living it. Your own village means that you are not alone, that you know there is a something of you in the people and the plants and the soil that even when you are not there, it waits to welcome you. Uh, with this quote, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's first national webinar series 2020 hosted by KLE Society's Law College Chikodi. A respected resource person of the today's webinar series, Dr. J.S. Halshetty, Advocate, High Court of Karnataka, Bangalore. All the executive members of the KLE Society's Law College and all the members of the local governing body KLE Society's Law College Chikodi. And respected principal, Professor D.B. Solapre, sir, Principal of all the law colleges of KD Society, Belagavi. Professor V.S. Birgi, IQSC Coordinator, Professor P.M. Kamte, Professor Yale Sardar, distinguished participants from different parts of the country. Dear student friends, ladies and gentlemen, a warm greetings to you all. Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all to this national webinar series for the third day. Indeed, it is an honor to welcome you all to this webinar. Professor Ali B. Patil, at the very outset, I am High Court of Karnataka, Bangalore, who has kindly consented within a short notice. Despite his presence is looked with lots of admiration. I accord a very affectionate welcome to all the members of the executive committee. Welcome you all. I also welcome to all members. Vice is breaking.
हेलो सर हाय सॉरी फॉर द इनकन्वीनियंस सर कनेक्शन यस विल प्रोसीड सर यस यस Yes, I will start. It's already late now. Ten minutes, uh, sir. Before before we start, sir, hmm. uh, Madam Vishali will uh, introduce you, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, do it fast. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, already lost ten minutes. Where are you? What for that? Sir, please start. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a moment, sir. We are having technical issues. That's all, right? Um, right. Okay. Good morning to all. I'm very sorry for that technical issue that happened, and we have just lost ten minutes of the valuable time. Uh, uh, let me tell all the participants as well as uh, uh, sir that you can extend your timing beyond one one hour also. Uh, that is there. So, good morning to all. I would like to just uh, give a brief introduction to about the resource person. and we are into our third day of the national level webinar series being organized by kali societies law college chikodi the resource person i have to introduce uh, to the virtual gathering is quite unique today he is well equipped with both teaching and practical aspects of law it is my pleasure to introduce dr jagdish s hal shetty advocate practicing at the high court of karnataka bengaluru sir has completed his schooling from ilkal a taluka in bagalkot district he has completed his graduation in arts stream from karnataka university darwad he completed his graduation in law from one of the eminent law colleges in karnataka that is uh, university law college darwad he completed his masters in law from mysore university with a specialization in international law sir was awarded his doctoral degree in law from mysore university in the year 1998 for his thesis titled domestic application of international human rights law in india a critical study his career journey began with teaching law in our society's law college uh, situated at gadag as well as chikodi he later plunged into practicing law and has earned a repute uh, as a lawyer he handles cases relating to civil consumer consumer laws and administrative cases sir is also having uh, to his credit many articles from reputed journals on issues relating to international law with this brief introduction i would like to introduce the uh, resource person of today's uh, webinar dr jagdish s halshetty thank you shall i start now yeah yeah sir i think you should start yeah thank you yeah thank you sir yes yes allow me to uh, go for screen sharing yeah you disabled ah no 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 sir screen share kar yes sir now you can, can share it sir yeah thank you thank you mr uh, stolapure and thank you uh, thank you madam really for your nice words and we are already running late so continue the today is a topic for the national webinar series but i have uh, very good memories from uh, chikodi law college i started my teaching career uh, from chikodi law college and we uh, and i me and myself and uh, dr jaisim who is presently principal of uh, belgaum law college Uh, had have good memories of uh, chikodi law college who hosted uh, several moot court competitions there and it's great thing to know that uh, the chikodi law college is uh, hosting the national webinar series and uh, at the very outset i must congratulate them for this and i thank them for giving me an opportunity to speak on the topic uh, the courtroom ethics and practices Uh, i have about uh, 12 years of uh, experience at bar especially in karnataka high court and uh, karnataka administrative tribunal bangalore courtroom ethics and practices 
advocate profession is noble profession see the only legal only profession that is found mentioned in uh, constitution is legal profession article 22 mentions that no person who is arrested shall be detained in custody without being informed as soon as may be of the grounds for such arrest nor shall he be denied the right to consult and to be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice and this fundamental rights fundamental right shows that the the importance of uh, the legal uh, profession that is advocacy give me a minute in article 21 of the constitution also which deals with the uh, right to life and personal liberty the supreme court has interpreted it uh, in khatri case saying that uh, it is a fundamental right to legal aid that is everyone should have a uh, right to legal aid from this we can understand the importance of uh, the legal profession Court. In order to understand the topic of courtroom ethics and uh, practices, we need to understand what is court. Because I'm not dealing with uh, the ethics in, uh, I mean, the detail uh, aspect of uh, the legal ethics. I'm confining my talk uh, only to the courtroom ethics. What is to be done in courtroom? Section three of the Indian Evidence Act defines. court includes all judges and magistrates and all persons except arbitrators legally authorized to take evidence cpc crpc even ipc do not define uh, court evidence act defines court it only means that 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 court means authority to adjudicate legal disputes so the body of judges we have power to hear and uh, decide the cases any people are uh, trying to join so i am getting uh, the pop up here right now what is ethics moral principles that govern a person's behavior this is all that we are concerned with today in today's topic that is courtroom ethics that is how advocate should conduct himself in the court when he enters the court and by the time when he leaves the court what should be his conduct if he is going there to address the court what he should do etc etc that i am going to deal what is practices because i am also told to uh, emphasize on the practices i mean uh, what is how the advocate should handle the case in the court it is nothing but uh, established uh, uh, conduct established method of conducting proceedings in a court of law in order to improve uh, the skill right to practice law we all know that section 30 of the advocates act provides uh, the right to practice it is a statutory now statutory right now uh, supreme court has said it is not a fundamental right but it is a statutory right under section 30 of the advocates act who is an advocate if you go to advocates act also advocates act says advocate who is entered the role on the provisions of under this act section 2 sub section 15 of the cpc defines who is a pleader pleader means any person entitled to appear and plead for another in court and includes an advocate a wakil and an attorney of a high court so even legal practitioners act also defines who, uh, who is a legal practitioner uh, uh, but section 2 sub section 15 of the cpc is a uh, uh, well defined uh, provision for uh, knowing who is the advocate main object of uh, courtroom ethics 
the main object of the court rule ethics is to maintain the dignity of the legal profession because legal profession as i said it's a noble profession it is meant for uh, the service to the society it's not a business hence there has to be there has to be some sort of uh, cooperation between uh, the bench and the bar in order to secure the ends of justice what is courtroom ethics the code of conduct regulating the behavior of uh, the lawyers uh, towards himself his client his opponent and towards the court today largely i am addressing on uh, the uh, the code of conduct in the court Yes, sir. Okay, you have raised your hand. Why? Yes. do we have a written code of conduct for lawyers yes chapter 2 part 6 of bar council of india rules deals with uh, the code of conduct for lawyers how they should uh, conduct themselves uh, before the court how they should uh, conduct themselves with uh, the client the opponent uh, advocate largely in the society as well bar council of india has framed these rules and they have power under section 491c of the advocates act 1961 and it is exercising this power they have framed these rules and the preamble to this chapter 2 of part 6 of the bci rules says the list is not exhaustive now we see why there is a need for regulating the behavior of uh, the advocates in the court room or to the client or to the opponent uh, advocate and how they should conduct themselves in the society it is because the advocates are part part of administration of justice they are uh, officers of the court as i said it is a service oriented profession and uh, we need to conduct ourselves uh, in a better manner so that uh, the people should feel that yes here is a noble man who is practicing law and it's not only the advocate profession that is being uh, i mean the advocates are regulated even the professions like uh, doctors engineers chartered accountants they do have a code of uh, conduct for example for doctors uh, that is the medical council of india uh, who uh, deals with uh, the the code of conduct for uh, the the advocates sorry uh, doctors now see chapter 2 of part 6 of uh, bar council of india rules uh, uh, section 1 uh, largely deals with uh, the code of conduct uh, for lawyers uh, in the court room duty to conduct himself in dignity and uh, self respect that that the advocate should always feel that he is part of the noble profession and he should not uh, he should not uh, feel that yes he is from uh, the other uh, class of the society he should always conduct himself uh, in a in a in a better manner so that uh, the he say he can <coughs> appear and plead effectively before the court there is a duty to maintain a respectful attitude in court that is not to lower the dignity of the court dignity of the court is essential for uh, the survival of uh, 
free community and if you are not respectful to the court say for example when you enter the uh, court room you should bow and when uh, you are already there in the court when the judge comes you should rise and those are the manners that you should always follow and that's how when you show respect to the others will follow it there is a duty not to influence the decision of the court by any illegal or improper uh, means that is you should not enter into private communications with the judge in in order to see that what the outcome of the case should be in your favor that you should not do actually if it, if you do that you will you will uh, receive uh, the uh, the uh, the the thing that that disciplinary proceedings that may follow against you What happened? Hello, Pure. What happened? Hello. Hello. Uh, screen share, boy. Then. Ah. Meeting who did that? Hello. Post disabled screen sharing and other things. Hello. Hello. Screen sharing it. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. 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 Sir, yes, it is it is uh, visible now. Okay, okay. Audible, there is voice breaking and audible, audible and visible, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I can proceed. See, now uh, uh, there is a, there is a duty cast on the advocate. to to prevent uh, his client from resorting to unpracticed in court if he if the advocate comes to know that uh, his client is uh, is uh, uh, privately communicating with the judge to see that uh, the outcome of the case uh, will be in his favor if he comes to know that if the advocate comes to know that uh, the client is uh, engaged in such uh, unfair uh, means uh, he should return the brief he should not continue handling such cases and that is the duty cast upon the the advocate and he should uh, tell his client that he should not indulge in such a unfair means duty not to be a mouthpiece of his uh, client this is a very important uh, duty cast upon the advocate because some clients do instruct the advocate that that the advocate should address in this way he should address the court with these points he should show these photos to the court if the advocate who is handling the case if he does what the client says then he will not remain as an advocate he has to judge 
what are those sentences what are those photos that the client wants to show to the court and in his judgment if they are not proper he should not use such sentences he should not show such photos to the court because some clients are very smart nowadays because they read a lot of things uh, on internet and they say that uh, you should uh, there is a judgment and this judgment should be cited etc etc may not sometimes those citations are not proper to be cited in such cases because the facts are different under those circumstances the advocate should always should always say to the client that that he is the advocate in his judgment he should be he should be allowed to handle the case in the manner in which he wants to the other duty on the advocate towards the court is that what type of language should be used in the pleadings and always and uh, arguments that is general language shall not be used in the pleadings and arguments you should always use the legal language in pleadings and in his uh, arguments in fact there is a subject called uh, legal language uh, nowadays and uh, the the advocates should prepare to prepare his pleadings by using the legal language for and in his arguments also if during his arguments if he uses the the legal language or the sentences that are uh, uh, there in the judgment say for example the for example this is bhagwati's uh, observation in epr of powers of state of tamil nadu on uh, uh, the article 14 of the constitution that uh, equality is a dynamic uh, concept and it cannot be cribbed and find cabin in uh, traditional or doctrinal limits if the advocate use the language sentences that are stated in the judgment then the judge will get an impression that uh, here is a man who has well read who is well read and he can uh, appreciate the arguments of the advocate there is a duty always to appear in court in uh, the prescribed dress the men should always wear the white shirt the black coat and the band but sometimes in official courts i have seen uh, uh, some advocates do not wear uh, the white shirt so they wear uh, the black coat uh, so that practice uh, is not uh, correct they should always uh, wear the prescribed dress as per the work of india rules advocate shall not enter appearance to plead practice in any court if the member or presiding officer or judge is a relative of the advocate this is another uh, duty asked upon the advocate that uh, if uh, he is uh, uh, say son of the judge he should not appear should not plead should not do anything he is son in law uh, we see sometimes uh, and we know that uh, as he is the son of the sitting judge and i have not seen any any such person appearing before the same person that is son appearing before the father though they practice in trial court but uh, some this is a duty that is cast upon uh, the the advocate if he should not appear before uh, the judge if he is related not to wear bands gowns in public this is another uh, Uh, important duty cast upon the advocate uh, that uh, sometimes i have i mean uh, some um, uh, go to marriage functions marriage functions wearing uh, uh, the coat right from the uh, court they go to the marriage functions attend and come back have lunch and come back that should not happen uh, especially in taluka courts these things do happen but there there is duty cast upon the advocate not to wear bands gowns in uh, public he is not supposed to wear a black coat uh, even when you go to marriage ceremonies uh then another duty is not to appear for or against any organization society uh, company uh, in which he is uh, 
uh, member of uh, executive committee this is another uh, important uh, uh, the duty that if he happens to be member of the executive committee he should not of a company he should not uh, appear for uh, the company Duty not to appear in any matter in which he himself has uh, pecuniary interest. Uh, say, for example, uh, if uh, he is a creditor to the bank and uh, bank is a bank, there is a bankruptcy proceedings going on, then he should not uh, enter uh, appearance either for himself or for others. Duty not to stand as a surety for his client in any legal proceedings. Say, for example, in bail proceedings, say, sometimes it may so happen. That you may not get uh, solvent surety under those circumstances, uh, should not you should not stand as a surety uh, to your client in the bail proceedings or any for any other such uh, things. These are uh, the general uh, the, the rules, the rules that are stated in uh, the Bar Council of India rules. Uh, pertaining to the code of conduct for lawyers in the uh, courtroom. courtroom. Uh, these are not exhaustive list. These are some of the important uh, the rules pertaining to the conduct of the, the advocate in the courtroom. There are general rules. We all know that. We all know that. But apart from that, apart from that, most important uh, things for the advocates in courtroom is during the course of uh, the presentation of the case in the court. That is practices, courtroom practices. And uh, the important uh, thing that we all should know, most of the participants are uh, budding uh, advocates, law students, that uh, advocacy is learned in the courtroom and not sitting in association room or uh, chambers. This we must, we must know that. Because uh, I have seen many, many, many uh, juniors uh, sitting in uh, association room, association room, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. They should sit in courtroom, and they should watch the proceedings. They should uh, watch seniors conducting the, the cases. From that, they learn many things. Many things. If they happen to uh, deal such, I mean, similar cases, how they should address uh, the court, how they should decide the how they should cite uh, the judgments. The most important uh, courtroom practice is you must be on time, you must be punctual. Say if the trial court, I mean, most of the trial courts come in uh, at 1 a.m. in the morning. So you should be there when uh, the court uh, begins. In high court, 10.30, you must be there. You never know when your case is uh, going to be called uh, in the high court. Maybe your serial number is uh, 10. So you need, you, you, sh you, you, sh you need not wait till uh, uh, your uh, uh, case is called. You should be there before uh, uh, your case is called. And when the case is called, you should go and uh, make a submission. How to address the court, you all know that, right? Nowadays, uh, my lord, Right, addressing the court, uh, high court, my lords, right, that is uh, deprecated and uh, now is advised to use either sir or your honor, right. But we are all used to it, right, my lord, addressing the court, and my lord, we are all used to it and we continue to do that. Right? So we are told to you not to use uh, my lords, your lordship and honor. And, uh, it's advisable to use uh, sir or your honor. Another important uh, thing with regard to courtroom practices is uh, don't be in a hurry to open your case. Why I'm saying this is because it may be one, it may be one one case for you there in that particular court, but the judge will be dealing with uh, uh, hundreds of cases. So, say for example, yours is serial number ten, and uh, uh, judge finished the ninth case, and you should not go in go immediately and start uh, arguing or presenting your case. Right? You should come out of ninth case and you should ask him, yes, what's your case? What is your case? And then you make your submissions to the board. Then it is well received. Before
Hello. This is the slide. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what about that? Uh, maintain calmness, self position, and uh, pleasant uh, humor. That's uh, another uh, uh, quality that it should have, and you should conduct always uh, in such a way that uh, you remain calm throughout uh, the course of the argument, and you should have uh, the humor. Your, uh, so that uh, that should not get annoyed. Don't interrupt the judge when he speaks. This is another another important thing that uh, uh, the advocates uh, uh, should follow while arguing the case before the court. Don't interrupt the judge when he is uh, speaking. Allow him to speak, and uh, if he is asking any question, hear it fully. So you may know the answer. Don't interrupt and answer the question. Let him complete the question and then take a pause. Think about your answer because there may be a trap sometime when by through the question. So your answer should not end your case. So you should always be very careful while answering the, to the questions posed by the court. That's what don't hurry to reply to questions posed by the court. And uh, don't interrupt the opponent also. If your opponent, uh, the advocate, is, if your appellant and the respondent is addressing the court, don't interrupt him. Right? You, you hear him. You hear him uh, and then prepare notes. Then answer answer the, the, the address, I mean, the arguments of the, the rebuttal. Interruptions, ineffective interruptions, they're all there. Right? Say, for example, if he is citing a judgment uh, uh, which is overruled, then uh, you need to interrupt. You need to tell the judge that uh, he allowed his uh, citing an overruled judgment. Uh, this judgment is overruled in such and such a case. That is effective interruption. So when you should interrupt, when you should not, right? it all comes by practice. Right? Experience will tell you. Don't argue across the bar. That is, don't argue with your uh, opponent while addressing the court. Say, for example, that's what I said. If you interrupt, why are you interrupting? I'm addressing so and so. Quarrel sometimes takes place. So don't quarrel with your uh, uh, opponent because uh, that will not be received well received by the court. The court will, the judge will get uh, angry. If you start quarreling with each other, because you are there to address the uh, court, you need to argue. You need to address your argument to the court, not to your uh, opponent. Don't contradict the judge. Say, for example, if the judge were to say that uh, this is the position of the law, right? If you understand that uh, what the judge is saying is uh, incorrect or per incurium, per incurium, right? Then. Um, don't say openly that uh, my lord is wrong. Say, I beg to defer, my lord. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, this is the correct position of the law. I may be wrong, my lord. You may say, I may be, I may be wrong, my lord, but this is the position of the law. Uh, I may be corrected uh, if I'm wrong, my lord. This is how we need to, you need to address the judge if uh, something which is not uh, correct, if the judge says, that it is, if it, sometimes it may happen so that uh, judge may be under the impression that, that this is the position of the law. But sometimes uh, 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 you may be right. But uh, how to address the court in such a situation? Right? You have to you have to uh, understand that it shouldn't appear to the judge that uh, that you are telling him that he is wrong. He is wrong. He is always right. That's how. So. Uh, you should know the judge right, before you know the right the law. That's how it is said. A successful lawyer knows the uh, judge than the law. Answer directly to any question put to you by the judge. So don't beat the bush. If the judge asks you a question, right, answer it fairly. 
you need to concede sometimes because if you some what happens in high court is sometimes when when a question is posed and if you answer that question you have no case it happens so it happens it happens so uh, you have no other way but to answer the judge it is always a complaint from judges that that the judge uh, advocates are not uh, uh, do not answer uh, the questions that they ask so this practice that we need to develop even including us that you know uh, whenever the judge ask a question you need to answer directly fairly so you concede that you have no case but you have to tell that this is the thing Yes. Yes. Sir, you proceed, sir. Yeah. Don't offer to argue when you are not called. This is very important. For example, you are appearing for a respondent. Who has to start argument in the beginning? It is for the appellant. It is for the petitioner to address the court in the beginning. so when he start arguing petitioner or appellant right he may have no case judge will dismiss it but if you start arguing then he may admit the case he may issue interim orders because sometimes your submissions may provide a point to the other side go continue to argue when the judge is in your favor that's what i am saying when when appellant or petitioner is arguing the case as a respondent you come to know that what he is submitting is not acceptable to the court most of the times it happens they have no case so unless you are called upon to argue the case stand there say only that i am appearing for the respondent then when the judge asks you that yes mr respondent then you start arguing the important thing that you need to do is don't repeat your points you just get irritated you continue to repeat your points say if you have four points so tell them one by one but again don't repeat right one by one so once you complete four points stop there next important thing that is don't speak disparagingly any judge most of the times it happens because in high court what happens is there is an appeal against the judgment of the trial court the trial court uh, might have committed uh, serious error serious error in appreciating facts uh, or uh, the law right so while in your pleadings don't uh, say that uh, judge has committed uh, this uh, mistake he has no knowledge of law don't say that right though the ignorance may be elementary one but, but you need not you should not actually you should not uh, uh, use such uh, words against any judge because to err is human sometimes it may so happen uh, say for example like in one case it means happened so that uh, that uh, uh, say there was a condition in the gift Uh, not to alienate the property that is gifted uh, the trial court said uh, since there was a, a condition in the gift not to alienate the donee has uh, gifted the property and uh, sold the property to some other person and hence uh, the sale is uh, invalid that is uh, against section 10 of the transfer of property act so where uh, the condition condition uh, 
of uh, alienation is uh, against the law hence uh, it is considered as a valid gift and hence he can alienate or sell the property there may be such occasions where the judges i mean sometimes sometimes it may so happen that uh, there may be ignorance of uh, the basic Proceed, sir. Proceed, sir. Now, who is this Anvesh Pradhan? He is interrupting a lot. Anyway, sir, I'll remove him, sir. Uh, sorry. Yes. Next. Uh, yes, I was saying. Yes. So, only say that uh, you know uh, the learned uh, trial court judge has not appreciated uh, section ten of the Transfer of Property Act uh, without uh, uh, commenting uh, on. Uh, The understanding of uh, the trial court judge. The, the we should always present our best uh, evidence uh, in the beginning itself, or say uh, the best points and the case, without reserving it to some other. Uh, uh, I mean, later stage. Uh, tomorrow, I understand uh, Dr. Jaisuma will be addressing on uh, the best evidence. Right, he is a master in uh, the evidence act, so we are eager to hear it tomorrow. So, if when you have best evidence, right, present it in the beginning itself, or if you have a very good point, right, if you think that that will clinch your case, then uh, it is always better for you to uh, cite it in the very beginning itself without reserving it uh, to at a later stage. Because if you reserve it for a reserve it uh, for a later stage. Then the judge, when you address, when you point out that this is the evidence or this is the point, judge may think that uh, why you have not cited it in the beginning. The, probably you think that it is a weaker point, and hence you are not cited it then in the beginning. Uh, so he may not uh, uh, take it as a best point or a best evidence. So it is always better for uh, the judge, sorry, the advocate, to present it in the beginning. Addressing the court, the The advocate uh, should always look at the judge rather than uh, uh, looking down. That that is not uh, correct because some 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 lawyers uh, do uh, argue the case looking down, not uh, looking at the judges. Uh, I don't know why, but and you you should look at the judge so that uh, so that you you understand whether the judge is uh, receiving your points. Because uh, his body language will tell you that whether he is receiving receiving. Why it is happening? I am unmuted. Am I right? Uh, no, sir. Continue, sir. Uh, okay. Don't look back for uh, applause, approbation uh, from uh, those gathered in the court is another important uh, behavior that we should always uh, remember. That is, uh, I have seen some advocates uh, uh, when they say a point, they look back, they look back uh, and uh, want their uh, colleague uh, to appreciate it. They nod the head. This is a very good point you said. That's very. <laughs> it's not a good practice to look back uh, uh, for appreciation of uh, the members who gathered in the court. so your your approach should be towards the judge right you should never look back you should never look back while addressing the, the court and the most important thing is argue only when you are fully prepared right don't take a chance 
especially in high courts don't take chance even in supreme court also if you are prepared then open your brief otherwise speak fine tell the judge that my lord i have i am not fully prepared today kindly give me some time so me he, he may and the recording is right our universal with the appropriate uh, citations right be up to date always right so if you are uh, coming across uh, 1960 judgment uh, of the supreme court or high court uh, please see to it that uh, whether this case is uh, followed in any other case or whether it is overruled and in how many cases it is followed and uh, if you, so my point is look for uh, latest uh, case law on the point and then then cite it and with a memo you present it to the court uh, with a uh, running number say for example uh, five judgments uh, you are giving it to the judge so you are running numbers right 1 2 3 so it may end 50 pages so to give it uh, a running numbers so that uh, you can directly go to page numbers and ask the judge to turn it so this is another important thing that uh, advocates uh, should note uh, most of the times it happens in trial court that uh, uh, they give a bunch of citations to the, uh, the trial court judge for reading he is not asking you to give, give uh, the bunch of judgments the advocates especially the junior advocates should always should always address the court that here is a statement this is the paragraph where the high court or supreme court has stated this this is the observation this is aptly applicable to the present facts of the case the facts of this case like this and the, similarly in this uh, judgment the facts are same you should convince the judge with relevant paragraphs in the judgment don't give judgments just like that right don't mark and give sometimes some some advocates mark the judgment tell the judge that uh, my lord your honor i have marked uh, the portions in the judgment then the judge will also say that uh, i will uh, read these judgments even if he says then politely politely tell him lord uh, you take uh, my lord through the paragraphs uh, very important points are uh, made very important observations are also made so you should feel you should feel that yes here is a very important judgment that is to be told to the judge he should see right he may be in a hurry because hundreds of cases are uh, uh, listed before him so you may not have time, all the time to go through all the judgments not from first page to last page at least you need to you need to point out the relevant paragraphs of the judgment this is very very important and give it with a memo that is that is always better and you should supply a copy of uh, the memo of citations with the copies of uh, the judgments to the opposite side also because he may take time i don't know all these judgments uh, so i may be given time to go through and uh, uh, appreciate so he may take time so unnecessarily avoiding that you can always give a copy to the other side even the list of documents you are presenting you should always give a copy to the other side that is the best practice 90% we don't do that but what i am suggesting is we should we should give uh, the copies to the other side don't read head notes this is another important thing as i said take the judge to the relevant paragraphs in the judgment not to the head notes not to the head notes don't read head notes head notes are not part of the judgment head notes are not part of the judgment head notes are prepared by the editor of the journal this is very important thing that uh, the advocates especially junior advocates but lawyers the law students should know this don't read head notes so what you can take is 
after that head note there is a paragraph number is given so go directly to the relevant paragraph of the judgment read the paragraph understand what the judge has said because sometimes editor may commit a mistake what is his understanding about the law what is his understanding about that particular paragraph in the judgment he has highlighted that point in the head note sometimes he may be incorrect so under those circumstances you must read the relevant paragraphs in the judgment in order to appreciate the the point of the, uh, the judge and the most important thing is you must read the facts of the uh, judgment first then appreciate the judgment because facts may be different principle may be laid down there but if the facts are different totally different then you can distinguish you can distinguish it's a technical term distinguish so you you can distinguish the judgment and say that this judgment is not applicable to the present facts of the case so uh, you need to call out the ratio descendency of a case uh, there is a very uh, good book on uh, the how to find out the ratio descendency of a case uh, glanville williams uh, learning the law it's a elementary uh, thing and uh, the glanville william has uh, uh, succinctly stated uh, how to find out the ratio descendency of a case in his book uh, learning the law so maybe that is there in the uh, case law technique uh, chapter chapter uh, so um, all of you read that particular uh, chapter case law technique wherein it is uh, beautifully explained how to find out the ratio descendency of a case and how to distinguish distinguish uh, the uh, judgments Dr. Goodhart uh, has said uh, material facts plus decision is equal to ratio descendency. A very simple formula he has stated. You must call out material facts plus and then decision of the case then you will have a ratio descendency of the case. What are material facts? Again a moot question. Right? What are material facts? Material facts are those facts which you prove before the case in order to succeed those are the material facts what is the ultimate decision if you find out these two then you will have ratio descendency of a case don't raise wise unnecessarily right don't raise wise at all in the who is doing this solapure can you see sir some somebody has uh, marked uh, on this from that can you see that mark uh, the green mark no yes yes sir yes sir we can see it sir yeah. somebody will try to slide it sir okay. so it it comes like that sir okay okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Don't raise uh, wise in the court, right? So, uh, that is not uh, the uh, actually the character of an advocate. So you should not. You should always remain calm uh, in court. Don't argue to please your client. Sometimes, sometimes uh, advocates right do that, but uh, suddenly that is not uh, best uh, practice. don't argue in order to please your client if there is a point raise that point if there is no point tell state to your client that there is no point of course i am not telling you to judge the case because we are all advocates and we should think always like an advocate not like judges but there are certain things which you come to know after certain experience of the passage of time that uh, in this case right there is no point and you need to tell your client that uh, that this is a thing and you can do your best effort be persuasive with uh, well constructed sentences speak in legal language i have already addressed this don't avoid points that are against you this is another important thing that uh, advocates should uh, consider that uh, 
if there is a point which is totally against you right you need to meet the point you need to tell you need to tell the judge डिस्टर्बेंसर So, the point points that are against you that I am saying that uh, there may be a point, weak point. I am suggesting uh, there may be a weak point. So, if you don't address that weak point, later what happens is if the opponent side highlight that weak point, weak point, and point out uh, to the court that here is a point he has suppressed, he will tell you that. Here is a point that is suppressed by the appellant or respondent, uh, which is uh, against them. So the judge will take it down. That here is a point that is not highlighted. That means they have no case. Rather, what you need to do is you need to find out the weak point and highlight that here is another point that is in his in your favor. That's how the advocacy. Anticipate questions from court and prepare accordingly. This comes by experience. You need to anticipate questions. So uh, this is the case. So this kind of question will be raised tomorrow, and I should be prepared for uh, these uh, uh, points. Sorry, uh, questions. How you can do that? Even today we go to court uh, and watch the proceedings. If we have a case tomorrow in the same court hall. because we want to know how the judge is dealing with such cases what kind of questions he is raising so we go to court in advance right we sit across and see that if uh, same case similar cases do come so how the judge is uh, dealing with such cases and how, what kind of questions that are being asked to the advocate on uh, the case so that will help you to prepare yourself prepare yourself to the case so it is always better to go to the court sit and see the proceedings search for uh, weak points of the opponent and cite them when your turn comes this is another uh, important uh, uh, practice that we should uh, cultivate that after going through your case right you should always look for what are the weak points of the opponent side so that you can highlight you can highlight to the court and succeed in the case that comes by experience don't conceal facts that i already stated right if you can see the points and if the other side were to point out later then the judge will uh, decide against you rather you meet all those uh, Uh, weak points. Then, how you begin your case? How you begin your case? It's very important thing. Two three sentences, the judge will come to know that uh, whether uh, you are a beginner or an experienced lawyer. Right? How you address the court is another uh, important thing that you you should uh, understand. It comes by experience. It comes by experience means. you need to watch you need to watch how senior advocates uh, address the court how they begin the case if it is uh, uh, appeal case they say this is the nature of the suit that is whether suit for injunction suit for uh, declaration suit for uh, specific performance then who are all the parties then whether uh, the appellant is the son of the Uh, so and so, that is 
if it is a partition case over all the respondents so you need to refer to the genealogy also then you narrate the case narrate the facts of the case and another important thing is don't go beyond the facts of the case confine your arguments to the facts of the case always then when you are submitting any document to the court furnish a copy to the opposite side always if you don't do that then he will take time he will take time or he will say that uh, i am not submitted uh, the copy or supplied a copy i want i want to go through that i mean the case may be urgent for that reason so let us i mean don't do that uh, so furnish a copy to the opposite side always there are so many things that are told how to conduct the uh, cases but since uh, due to constraint i mean time constraint i need to wind up and uh, these are all the important things that uh, we need to we need to uh, learn we need to conduct ourselves in the court room and uh, uh, i wish all uh, the wedding lawyers a very best of uh, luck thank you mr solapure once again for uh, the opportunity that you have uh, given me to speak on this uh, topic thank you very much uh, thank you sir at uh, very first i i would like to express my apology for uh, little uh, technical glitches sir yeah, yeah i wanted to tell also <laughs> that uh, yesterday i was yes, uh, watching uh, dr sharda madam there was not that uh, yes, disturbance yes. Uh, so there was, was no not, screen uh, sharing na uh, there power was power. no ah, screen sharing it was not powerpoint yes, presentation so yes, through sir. if we address uh, in the online i mean this webinar by powerpoint presentation yes. i think there is a lot of uh, disturbances somebody is doing yeah. this and all the muting and all that that's happening So yes, as a result, uh, some some people will scratch on it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Flow of thoughts will, uh, you know, uh, not be there if uh, there is a yes, disturbance. Sir. Right. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, thank Anyways. you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you. Um, uh, at the very outset, uh, I now I would like to take some questions uh, raised by the participants through the registration form. Uh, sir, you have. very nicely and uh, informatively and elabor elaborately explained explained advocacy should be learned in court room and not sitting in the association room or club even in fact chambers uh, with that i would like to take some questions sir now raised by the participants in the session uh, through the registration form the first question is raised by savita ap university of mysore sir she wanted to know uh, is advocate advocate profession is in crisis at present situation at this uh, covid 19 pandemic effect uh, we are all uh, in fact uh, suffering right because the courts are uh, uh, functioning online and only uh, uh, hearing cases are being taken up and uh, they tell us that uh, if there is urgency then only move the memo lot of members are being moved saying that this is urgency what is urgency for me may not be urgency for the judges right they see that there is no urgency in the case though we understand that there is urgency because the client wants some yes. relief right yes. so say that yes. unless uh, the uh, cl uh, the client is arrested or he is uh, evicted or he is he going to be hanged tomorrow so these kinds of questions that are raised nowadays whether there is urgency or not so uh in fact uh, uh, the we are all uh, uh, suffering but i don't think advocate profession as such is in a crisis this is just uh, uh, an issue it's only a passage of time that will tell us that when this is going to be ended so the moment it uh, is ended i think everything normal see will be there right so i don't think advocate profession is in crisis we are all surviving cases and <laughs> we are all we are all yes. filing cases but the only thing is that we yes. are not getting the cases listed before the court right the criminal cases are being listed the bail applications are listed 
uh, uh, say, I mean, uh, if we are to stay the proper further proceedings, uh, there is an urgency. The cases are being listed, right? Exactly, sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Yes. Next, uh, there is another one question, sir. Uh, how to improve our communication skill through practice? Sir? This question is raised by uh, Suttupa Garai, SOA National Institute of Law. Right, right, right. I tell you, in the very beginning, I mean, during the uh, uh, during the legal education, I mean, during LLB, right? You can improve your communication skills by participating in. Uh, uh, the moot court activities. If you don't do moot court activities in LLB, certainly uh, you will face a lot of difficulties uh, when you enter the bar. If you are, if you have not participated in a moot court competition, you passed LLB and straight away join uh, the uh, bar, then you may face uh, difficulties initially. So, how to improve communication skills, right? by watching by watching court proceedings by watching court proceedings certainly you can improve your communication skills how we learn language right from our childhood we learn by watching how they talk what does they do what are they doing so this is how we learn language similarly by sitting in a courtroom you certainly learn communication skills yes Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is another one question, sir, uh, from Anupama Bolas of our own college, yes. sir. Uh, her question is, yes. can anybody sit in, on, uh, sit in on a trial? And what is closed trial? I didn't get to, what is that? Uh, can any, what is that? Repeat, can, can anybody? anybody, yes, sir. Can anybody sit in on trial? And what is closed trial? Sit in on trial. This is what I'm yes, not the first Anybody, word. anybody. Achha, uh, uh, yeah, during the course yes. of the proceeding, yes, it's an open court system. You yes, can sir. go and watch the proceedings. So open court, anybody can go and watch the proceedings. Yes, sir. There is no uh, barrier, right? Uh, if, if you go to family court, sometimes what happens is uh, camera proceedings uh, do take place. Camera proceedings means... Uh, uh, if there is a sensitive matter, right? Uh, it's a family matter, means a divorce proceedings, maintenance proceedings, etc. And uh, so the party should not be uh, taken, uh, uh, what is what you can say, uh, he should not be defamed in front of uh, all by during the course of the cross examination. So they request uh, the court to conduct the camera proceedings. There are so many things, uh, right, that should not be uh, asked in the uh, uh, public. So they want uh, it to be uh, done uh, within uh, uh, the four walls in the sense of four camera proceedings. So judges, advocates, and parties only. Yes. Yes, sir. sir. Hmm. It's another question from uh, Arun B. Halgadgi of our college, sir. Yes. Uh, is there any fine to advocates if not to maintain the court decorum? Sir, yes, yes, I understand. Uh, if you do not, if you do not uh, yes, yes, behave, I mean, as per the BCI BCI rules, right? As a, in the beginning, I uh, uh, discussed, right? Right. The judge may refer the matter to the uh, uh, to the state bar council for uh, disciplinary inquiry, disciplinary inquiry, and uh, during the disciplinary inquiry. Uh, the the committee may impose uh, uh, the penalties that are prescribed under the uh, under the rules. Yes, Professor. Yes, Solapre. Thank you, sir. Yes, Solapur. Uh, there is another one question, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir, the question is from uh, once again from our own college uh, that has been raised by Mumtaj H. Nadab. Whether advocates are following the ethics, moralities in real sense. 
uh, it's all uh, individual perception what i say right uh, how yes, you yes, see at it and you will uh, receive it right so um, i have not come across any such incident where uh, the advocates are i mean uh, doing any unethical thing and uh, i wanted to advise in the very beginning but that is not to be told uh, right that uh, uh, when we join the bar right there is a uh, uh, immense pressure on the uh, the beginners that is uh, uh, new entrants uh, to the bar that uh, they want to succeed they want to show that uh, yes they can they can also do that so in that Uh, context what they do is they indulge some some other type of activity right so that should not be done and the, they will learn it very fast yes sir what they have done is yes, wrong sir. and they will discontinue it so for example uh, soliciting soliciting so they learn it in, within one or two months that this is not the way that they should conduct and this is this happens because uh, in, in in doing something right they want to show that yes i can do i can do this right why i am not able to do this so in a hurry they do uh, some uh, things which are uh, unethical but they learn it they learn it yes yes sir thank you sir sir there is a question from uh, professor mohammad salim khan from kl society's law college navi mumbai yes the question is sir uh, Uh, it has been observed that in mm. the lower courts mm. the clerks of the senior advocates mm. who do not have llb degree they also appear as advocates what is your say on the same sir it's a crime i tell you <laughs> it's a crime they are not supposed to do that yes sir no clerk no clerk no person no person can appear and plead before the court unless he has a due license that is a sanad from the state bar council he should have uh, his uh, name entered on the rolls of the state bar council then only he can appear and argue for the court clerks are not permitted to even make small submissions also they cannot yes sir yes sir yes uh, 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 yes thank you sir there is one Raj, more question sir rajesh kumar mishra uh, uh, that question has been yes sir yeah without rajesh gown and uh, without gown and court person. a person can appear before court sir not at all not at all now now what happens is uh, notification is issued uh, due to this covid 19 pandemic issue right we are uh, we are appearing before the court uh, wearing uh, only band white shirt and band right so uh, yes, in sir. all other uh, times right wearing a uh, coat gown right that's a prescribed dress code is there we need to we need to appear before the court in prescribed dress you are not supposed to appear uh, uh, only wearing uh, the shirts you have to you have to follow the dress code that is prescribed by the bar counts bar counts yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir sir there is one more question from indrajit j jana uh, yes. from university of calcutta sir so he yes. is he is asking uh, uh, sir uh, to please recommend some best books on drafting pleading and argument preparation yes yes drafting i have i mean uh, there is one book written by uh, krishnamurthy of uh, our own karnataka high court on uh, drafting of uh, pleading so if i one uh, hold me for a minute i will show that book also so that he can be benefited yes sir uh, uh, this is the book this yes, is the sir. book Yes, uh, Indrajit, you can you can view the view the screen of sir where he is sharing is, uh, the name of the plead, book. This is pleadings, uh, pleadings and practice in uh, civil and criminal courts by Professor V. Narayan Swami. 
yes sir yes thank you sir thank you uh, sir uh, uh, the last one is yes it has been raised by neelam neelam rani from g h g institute of law women sidwan kurd ludhiana punjab sir oh uh, is it mandatory to wish a judge every time you enter into a court room sir no not at all not yes. at all you, you we don't wish the judge right we don't wish the judge we go if we go inside the court we bow right we bow that's all right? yes sir right well while, while addressing also uh, we don't wish the judge good morning may I please my lord may I please your lordship what we used to do in the moot court in uh, real courts in regular courts this won't happen this won't happen yes, when you when when your case is called right what you say is your honor i appear for the plaintiff your honor i appear for the yes. defendant i appear for the petitioner i appear for the respondent this is what the beginning sentence no good morning no good evening no, uh, had lunch nothing nothing that sort of a thing no private business yes yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for a very informative answer sir thank you so much for taking all the questions very positively and uh, enlightening enlightening the young generation of uh, the, the new region thank you once again sir now uh, I, over I to i must i, I must thank Sardana. you yes yeah, i must thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity and uh, it's been yes. a pleasure uh, talking to you all and uh, especially belagal desima also was there for one hour almost uh, he was uh, watching yes. So yes sir, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. maybe tomorrow yes, sir. He, his session is there his session is there <laughs> yes sir on monday sir on monday sir <laughs> on monday okay monday is there yes, so i am yes, also sir. eagerly waiting for uh, the best uh, yes, evidence sir. Uh, once again we have the opportunity to listen in there <laughs> yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, yes. so uh, over I'm, to lat i am looking forward to jaisima's uh, session actually right <laughs> yes sir yes. okay yes it was a great pleasure to sir, listen you uh, yeah yeah jaisima is yeah yeah sir <laughs> how are you yes fan 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 doing great uh, nice to listen to you after a long time <laughs> Uh, courtroom ethics and practices, which is uh, actually this is uh, this is a very important topic that I felt so because the students have to be uh, trained in the college so that uh, uh, because very often when I go to courts, the first complaint that I get from the senior advocates and judges are that your your students are not behaving well. Uh, well you ask properly, them. and I am fortunate, uh, Jagdish. We remember. i went to athani court where wasdev but was there now he was our law secretary uh -huh. when I went and uh, when i addressed that uh, bar association on uh, november 26 26 that is uh, the law day and uh, he in the open uh, stage he was telling that if uh, if any junior advocate behaves well in athani court uh, we can very well make out sir he is from chikodi dakar Uh, there are uh, students from Chikudila College, oh. uh, and uh, Jinendra. They are all well behaved there. Even Bimu, uh, yeah, Bim, Bim, Kudwakili guys also there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bimu, he was, he was telling that whenever, uh, whenever we see uh, a decent behavior from a junior advocate, we immediately ask from which college. They say that uh, they say your name and uh, one more lecturer, your name and also Chikudila College. So we can very well make out that. Uh, uh chikodi law college students they behave very well that's what we inculcated in the beginning in yes. the students uh, how to behave even i, I was uh, watching you were very correct upon the students who were wearing uh, slippers with the uh, blazers on uh, <laughs> yes i wanted to highlight uh, but this is not the occasion i think uh, shrigav kar is also there and most of the students are also there here Uh, we find that uh, that uh, aura of our chikodi law college presence uh, see karan sholapur how much he has grown up today now uh, like yes, that, yes. Uh, we have created that band that brand there we hope that is continued that's the it is continued yes yes 
so happy to listen to you uh, uh, wish you all the best and uh, convey my greetings to ujwala <laughs> mr the expert is here sir <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fine that's fine that's fine oh ujwala <laughs> the expert yeah, yeah. <laughs> because i was i am yeah. not knowing this all so she is yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> online uh, classes the, when it comes to technology we are really trash <laughs> of course you are better and i am 100% illiterate <laughs> I, i was making powerpoint i am making slides now now after looking your experience now i am thinking whether i should go with them uh, exactly exactly i wanted to tell know, you we don't know how to uh, how to avoid that interference Yes, actually, because think, uh, somebody uh, there is a lot yeah, of interruptions. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Somebody will scratch there. Even Karan, actually, as a host, uh, you can take that control. You can admit. Uh, you can make a waiting room enable like that. Normally, yes, when sir. I do class, yes, I do same thing. Yes, sir. To, yes, sir. And once the yes, sir. I'll I'll, can, I'll take care of the thing. Lock, and see that uh, who are all the participants? They participate. They participate with their names on. Some people they come with their gadgets. Yes, sir. Uh, some gadgets name and uh, so they are. All, Ah, that's why that's why and uh, there is a actually Zoom app is safe. People have unnecessarily made a yes, havoc that it is safe. It's not like that because my, I am using a paid version. You are using a paid version. I mean licensed versions were different. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thing is, we can we yes, can control yes, the what you call uh, the platform here uh, by taking some part. Yes, sir. Enable the yes, waiting sir. room like that. We should enable the waiting room. We should not allow the people come hundred hundred. Yes. That's all. After that, you have to divert them to YouTube yes. like that. please uh, note yes, uh, the technical difficulties uh, yeah. today you faced uh, so how to overcome yes. those sure, sir, difficulties sure. huh. and so there is now one more sir uh, will come overcome with uh, yeah, the same we, issue uh, for our rotary we we are using zoom and there will be more mm. than 500 600 will be there uh, mm. for our rotary conventions and rotary we, virtual uh, we had a convention in, in zoom only we had more than 1000 uh, Uh, so everything was very simple but of course we are also not aware of the technicalities here but we should take the inputs from the particular uh, the people who know how to operate this digital platform yes even we yes, initially yes. i to face the problem when i was taking classes on zoom uh, there was there was some interference there people doesn't know how to mute and how to unmute so other things happen but but anyway see, see. it's she wants to suggest that, she wants to suggest because she is expert uh, <laughs> so tell tell uh. yeah so uh, hello everyone sorry yes, so what i want to say is that hello. Uh, during the meeting um, you don't need to make the person who is sharing the screen the host uh, under the share screen there's this arrow mark you can just press that and uh, press allow to share screen or else when you make the person who's sharing the screen the host there'll be a lot of problems because they're sharing the screen plus talking so either the screen won't be proper or their voice will be breaking off so you can just allow them and you can be the host and you can allow people inside the meeting that's what that's what that's what i wanted to suggest because yes. you, you made hall set to both host ah, and as a, a speaker you <laughs> should not yes. host you should you should continue to be a host okay Okay. And, okay. Uh, 14th we have we have one more uh, webinar uh, with uh, jurist wing of uh, brahmakumar ishwar vishwavidyalaya uh -huh. where uh, justice patchapur is also at this and rashmi house university law department professor she is a what do you call om shanti sister she will be addressing on some constitution spiritual outlook of indian constitution we uh, rl law college and uh, brahmakumari Uh, wing we are connecting just now we are finalizing that also but uh, it was very happy to listen to the because i also practiced for some years in lawyer course uh, we have to know what are the things that we need to maintain in the course for our decent practice right i'll say good day uh, thank you good day sir good day thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much uh, yes. over to yes uh, over to lata sardar no, uh, for proposing vote of thanks Thank you, Sulapur Sir. Um, Sir, so we are at the end of today's uh, today's uh, first uh, uh, national, national webinar series, ABC. And uh, Sir uh, has given uh, that is uh, Dr. J. S. Halshetty Sir, Advocate High Court of Karnataka, Bangalore, 
uh, he, the sir has enlightened on the topic the courtroom practices and the, the courtroom ethics so i would like to thank uh, dr j s halshetty sir and uh, principal bb pellet law college jaisimha sir uh, i would like to thank uh, jaisimha sir also and uh, our all uh, you know uh, principal and uh, motivation for this webinar series that is uh, dr professor db uh, solapur is sir thank you very much sir and at the outset i would also uh, like to thank uh, the cle board of management all the uh, members of the executive body for law colleges all the resource persons and uh, the principals of all the law colleges and the students of various colleges uh, participants from various colleges uh, faculty of all the law college uh, colleges thank you uh, thank you one and all for joining this webinar today thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you